refuting common Christian fallacy, guilt by association fallacy. What's the claim? If you have explored Trinitarian doctrine to any degree, you will have surely come across the Jesus is God or Jesus is Yahweh attribute association charts. An example of this is the image to the right. These charts are usually arranged to compare Jesus and Yahweh God by showing they share several things in common. These charts are nothing but deceptive fallacies. A person can share numerous things in common with another person and it will not make them that person by identity. Association fallacy backfires on the Trinitarians. Perhaps you have heard of the phrase guilt by association, which is known to be a common fallacy. The Trinitarian is trying to claim that since Jesus shares many things in common with God, then he is God by identity. It is pitifully ridiculous. The following chart is a similar layout to the ones Trinitarians use to compare Jesus and Yahweh. It is created with the exact same reasoning process used by Trinitarians to create their charts and demonstrates the complete foolishness of such reasoning. A person can theoretically share absolutely everything in common with another person and it will still not amount to a common identity. Even if Peter shared 100% of Jesus' attributes, Peter would not be Jesus. This is because there is one thing they cannot have in common, identity. Peter is one person and Jesus is another person. Peter is one identity, Christ is another identity. And the one thing they can never have in common is their personal identities. No matter how big you make the chart above, and no matter how many things you show Peter has in common with the Messiah, Peter will simply never be the Messiah. Peter is one identity, Jesus is another identity. They do not get to share common identity as quote unquote the Messiah. Double standards when applying identity. The same is true with the Son of God and his Father who is God. God is one identity, the Son of God is another identity. They do not share a common identity as God. In fact, Jesus does not share several things with the Father in addition to not sharing the Father's identity. For example, the Father has no God, while Jesus does. The Father is unbegotten, but Jesus is not. The head of Christ is God, while the head of God of the Father is nobody. This Trinitarian ploy is nothing but a pitiful fallacy. On one hand, they want to claim Jesus and the Father are two different identities, i.e. the Father is not the Son. But on the other hand, they wish to claim that both share one common identity. Stop and think carefully about that for a second. And that is not to mention the fact that the only way the Father and Son are the same in Trinitarian doctrine is having the same divine nature, which is a what and not a who. Now, how did they manage to make them the same identity? When they are not to confuse person and being, the who's and the what's. They are converting their what into a who by an act of their own will. When they inform everyone else, you should not confuse the who's and the what's. Connecting two examples. What Trinitarians try to do is identify Jesus as God when God already is identified as the person of the Father. And they attempt to do this by showing he shares things in common with the Father. It is just as ridiculous as trying to identify Peter as the Christ as we have shown previously. They are simply not the same identity, and just because they share things in common does not mean that Jesus is the same identity as the Father, i.e. quote-unquote God, any more than Peter is the same identity as Jesus, i.e. quote-unquote the Messiah. False Implications Even if we grant that none of this line of thinking or reasoning is fallacious, much of the information presented in these charts almost always seem to be inheriting misrepresentation of each respective text being quoted. For example, they will try to claim Jesus is omniscient and avoid the clear fact that Jesus increased in wisdom and does not know the day nor hour. Other falsehoods in these association charts are based on their own misrepresentations. The truth is that even if these charts were not presenting falsehoods within them, the claim is a farce anyway. The Peter-Jesus association charts demonstrates that quite clearly. No matter how many things you show one person has in common with another person, it will never amount to both of them having a common identity. You don't get to identify Jesus as quote-unquote God because he shares appellations with the Father any more than you get to identify Peter as the Messiah because he shares appellations with Jesus. Conclusion The Trinitarian argument trying to associate the identity of Jesus and Yahweh is completely dependent on fallacious grounding as demonstrated clearly. Therefore, any form of this argument should be disregarded to hold any credibility in attempting to prove Jesus is God or any form of the Trinity.